I will find a way to complete the ritual. I must. My lord is not forgiving. You made it all the way here, you creeping little maggots. Have you wriggled up to bow to me? As Lohar sent you to beg forgiveness for his sins. My lord had faith. He came to me when Lohar failed the queen. And as a reward for my service, he has granted me his favor. He has granted me Mord Akhaim. You will learn nothing! My lord has granted me power. I will never answer to another. You might not bow to me in this life, but maybe you'll bow to him in the next.
let's strike them down.
Thank you, sorcerers! Thank you for the source I need to become Mordecai!
tonight. The Master Sorcerer throws up his pocked, cracked arms to defend himself as you step forward. The undead dwarf looks quickly over its shoulder, his gaze darting from shadow to shadow. Of course! Of course! Anything! Just name it! What? Source? I... The skeleton slowly lowers his arms, staring at you in disbelief. Of course! You're Godwoken! You seek power! Ultimate power! <laughs> and I worried we could not find common ground. Yes, Godwoken, I can teach you. If you swear... You won't banish me to the afterlife. The death of the flesh is one of the smallest deaths. I have not passed on to the Hall of Echoes, nor do I ever intend to. Please, Godwoken, let me walk away and I swear I will show you all I know. That is not important. Just please tell me, do we have an accord or not? Please be very well, Godwoken. Listen carefully. Source and void, day and night, love and hate. One is meaningless without the other. To grow your source, to achieve your potential, you must embrace the void. The grinning skeleton reaches into the folds of his robes and pulls out a small black mass. It's covered in veins and oozing pus. Here, Godwoken. Take a bite. The finest meal you'll find in this cave. The heart of a void woken. Your guard stirs, pushing you to eat it. Do not fear, a voice whispers. Do what must be done. Perhaps not the most appetizing thing around, but if you truly want to channel more source. The skeleton extends his arm, jiggling the heart towards you. A glob of dark yellow pus oozes through the bones of his palm and drips to the ground. You double over, emptying the meager contents of your stomach onto the stone floor. Huh? Not for you. 
Perhaps it's an acquired taste. Deep inside, your god hisses in anger. Do it, it snarls. All will be well. Just do it. Regardless, you asked me to show you how to channel more source, and I offered you a solution. I did my part, and now I'm leaving this cursed place. Mortis looks at you in alarm. God's graves, please be quick. I, I had no choice. They wanted to destroy the Death Fog. They haul barrels of the greatest weapons in the world off a ship and then decide to throw them in the ocean. We couldn't let it happen. We needed it. So I... I took control. The power gifted to me. The power of Morda came. The power to bend the feeble-minded to my will. And so much more. It was a gift from... It was a gift. I... I can't! He'll hear! He'll know! He'll find me! You come. You can't help. No one can help. If he makes up his mind, nothing can protect you. I can't tell you. Mordus takes a step back, looking about in half-crazed panic. I can't. I... I can't. Not now. It's too late. It's all too late. The Dwarf sets his jaw and firmly refuses to speak until you ask him something else. Ah! The Queen! It's the Queen! She saw what Death Fog did to the Black Ring! She saw it destroy the Elven Forest! She said the Dwarves needed power like that! And he told me to make sure she got it! He told me to ensure they got to... Oh, arcs. The barrels were going to arcs. I, I can't. He'll hear. He'll know. He'll find me if I tell you I die, or, or worse. Mordus takes a step back. No I can't. I, I can't. Not now. It's too late. It's all too late. You grab the dwarf's old, brittle arm and follow through with your knee. There's a dry snapping sound as the crumbling bone cracks and gives way. Ah! No! Stop! Stop! I beg you! I'll tell you! You relent, and the dwarf stumbles back, cradling his fractured arm and whimpering. It's... It's him! The one the Seven rejected! The god! The dwarf is interrupted by another crack. You see his femur has developed a break. The fracture spreads, shearing the bone in two. Morda stumbles to the ground, oddly silent. He looks up, and you see that his jaw is cracked, broken, and falling to pieces. Fissures are starting to run across his skull, and his ribs start to snap and fall one by one. Mordus tries to raise his remaining arm to his head, splaying his fingers wide, but the digits are viciously snapped off by some unseen force. You hear the tiniest whimper from the skeleton before his face caves in, as if smashed with an invisible mace, and the body lies still and silent. You stare down at the pile of cracked and broken bones, so much for having him teach you to channel more source. <sighs> The thought of death fog gives you pause. A weapon like that should give everyone pause. Who wakes up in the morning and thinks, today I'll invent something that'll be able to murder people by the hundreds? A vast continent full of people 
Not much of a landlubber, but sometimes I get no choice in the matter. Besides, there's business to take care of. Grim for sure, but what gets me is why? The rebellion's scattered all over the hinterlands. Death fog's deadly, but it ain't precise. It's overkill for a ragtag array of revolutionaries. I... I don't know. I've never been one for worshipping. I always figured if Duna really existed, he'd show himself. I mean, am I really supposed to ask some invisible dwarf in the sky to grant world peace? Or give me a pony? Yeah, it sounded like a waste of time to me. But, uh, then he showed himself. He said he could help me free our people if I helped him. And I left with more questions than when I started. I always figured every dwarf is pure of heart when they pop out of their mamas. But we ain't born cruel. We're made cruel. That means we can be made uncruel. Not sure Lohar will ever be an upstanding member of his community. But he knows where to draw the lines. What's up, Chief? What, this old gaggle of weirdos? I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hurt you. I, I didn't want to hurt anyone. But he made me. That voice. He made me. I let him out of the vault. I killed anyone that got in the way. And then I sat here as he gibbered about needing to complete his bloody Mordecai. Damned if I know. Some ancient ritual, he said. It gave him the power to twist our minds, to turn us into his puppets. And when he was strong enough, it turned him into... that. He thought it was a reward. Kept saying how blessed he was. What madness. A vast continent full of people. The ghost turns to you, her finger urgently pointing towards something unseen. Silent lips move, issuing an urgent, unheard plea. Your hands merge together, your world twisting. Looking down, you see you're holding a barrel marked with a fatal warning. Death fog. A cart contains many barrels more, recovered from a wrecked ship. The room is filled with voices, cracking jokes and swearing oaths as you go about unloading the cart. But somewhere, in the hum of voices, one cuts through the rest. Stop, it hisses. Do your duty. You lift up the death fog, and, fighting against every step, you walk back to the cart. You pass a dwarf, struggling against the voice and winning. But you crack his skull with a barrel in your hands. One by one, the barrels are loaded again, and the cart departs. As it trundles out of the cave, the voice returns. Come, come to me and you feel your feet carrying you into the cavern's darkness.
spotted something. Even dead, I don't get no peace. You need something. What's it look like? Either there were a void woken attack, or this is the most unfortunate dinner party you ever did see. No shove off. I've got an afterlife to enjoy, and your jabbering ain't making it easy. Walk on, heartbeat. I got nothing to say to you. The dwarf pulls a dagger with shocking dexterity and reflexively swings at your gut. Thankfully, the ephemeral blade passes right through you. With a rancid look, the dwarf pockets the knife. As he does so, you spot the royal seal of the dwarven queen on the handle. Through gritted teeth, the dwarf growls. We're done here. Don't worry about it, says Lohar. Quietest work around, says Lohar. Well, I don't see him here, cold stone he's lying on. It will be fine, my ass. And here I was, the fool, believing him. The ghost swings a foot to kick its old body in frustration, but the boot sails straight through her corpse. Because it's his fault. If not for him, I'd still be sitting there, wine in hand, happy as Larry. But no, he knew best. He wanted the death fog destroyed. That's why we were to make sure it got into the right hands. Our hands! I even stood guard of Mordus when he were doing nothing but the Queen's bidding. No wonder we came to this. This is what I deserve for following the orders of a leader with the spine of a sponge. Thank Duna Her Majesty has more steel in her belly than that coward. You're a little tall to be asking questions like that. Her Majesty is trying to do what's best for the Dwarf people. And there's not a thing more you need to know.
melting away. Mordas turned the key into an amulet. Cunning. And I thought this cave couldn't get any more grim. I do not want to know what that smell is. Death, most likely. Watch your step. Careful now, that's a trap.
Careful now, that's a trap. on us or just lost its mind. <laughs> <laughs> 